Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. You know who it is and who it ain't, the blackest heart, the blackest mind, the blackest man on social media, sign of black in and shine it again, asking you to hit the mother cuss word share button because the message is more important than the messenger. So let me go ahead and get y'all started on something right quick. Um, on the first message, let me start by giving a shout out to uh, Dr. Tiasan Johnson for his coverage of a video in which a man um, showed his uh, girlfriend uh, and wife, uh, well, yeah, I guess either one, that he knew that he was not Ava's father. And um, of course, she starts with the usual, and I'm not going to go through everything that, that Dr. Tiasan Johnson said, because you can simply go there and you'll find uh, that video. I forgot the name. I can't see it right now on my screen. I'm sorry. Uh, my memory's limited and I'm going to get interrupted before I finish. So I have to talk quickly anyway, but I did want to point out, um, again, thanking him for the coverage. I also wanted you guys to understand something. When I tell you that she's at war with you and it is, it is a, a, a genetically elimination, a genetic elimination war or, or, uh, a, a reproductive elimination war that can include your mother. See in this video, the man tells his wife what he knows, her parents leave, and when he tells her that things are over, his mother starts to try to talk some so-called sense into him, you know, the full wisdom. His dad's not there, notice that. Her dad is, but his dad's not. And someone, as a matter of fact, let me find out his name. Um, somebody left a comment there uh, underneath his video and since I can find, okay, I'll be able to see, okay, it's Mama's Baby, Daddy's Maybe. That's the title of the video itself um, that Dr. Tiasan Johnson uh, uh, uploaded. And uh, let me find the comment section uh, where I can tell you who it was that wrote this particular comment. I want to thank the perverted alchemist as well because he pointed out what Janine uh, Dickinson did to Sylvester Stallone. Um, and told me about that and that was cold as hell but she was getting down with three dudes at the same time and Sylvester ordered the DNA test uh, because he had his suspicions and it came back negative so he kicked it to the curb and she wrote about this in her memoir so she actually confessed um, and so Dirty Jazz Music is one of the commentators underneath Professor Tiasan, um, Dr. Tiasan Johnson's video. And he said his mother was sympathetic because her son is a product of the same behavior. Bars right there. Next. Abdullah bin Babi Ataya, shout out to him too. Aslam alaikum, bro. Uh, he pointed out that women with husbands don't allow their sons to be used like this. And that's very true. My mother would not let me be used this way. I know as an example, uh, my aunt would not let my cousins be used this way. Um, and Marquez Bowden said, here's the other problem. Women will not hold other women accountable. This is why good women will either co-sign the behavior or say nothing. The fact that the mother shows more empathy towards the woman than her own son just shows how backwards our community suffers when it comes to men-women relationships. Another man said that 118 for LabCorp paternity test was the best investment he ever made. Now, Veronica Cobb jumped in and said, the young man decided to expose the lie with an audience and he shouldn't be surprised when his audience speak out, his audience speak out with her non-spelling self. Audience is a singular verb, Mrs. Cobb. He knew his mother and if he didn't, that's on him. He didn't need his or her parents' input regarding the decisions he made in his life. That's true. You can't fault him since trust is broken. To a certain extent, that's true. But see, Ms. Cobb, the point is that he should have done this in front of an audience just to embarrass the lady. And, and all of them would then understand exactly why the hell it was he's leaving. Now, Dr. Tiasan Johnson was still very nice because he said if the man decided to stay knowing everything, I back him up. That's very nice of him. I'm going to tell you, gentlemen. I'm telling you not to do it. I'm saying don't. When you find out a situation like that, you only raise the kid if mom signs away all rights. If you're going to do it because now you know, number one, you let the child know, listen, this is the deal. I do love you. I'm attached to you, but I'm not your, your blood father. And I'm not going to keep you away from your blood father's family. 
but I'm gonna look after you in the meantime. But you only do that if you get her to sign away the rights. You make her make a tough choice. Either you raise her by yourself or I raise her by myself and whoever I choose to get with later on. You don't get to keep her and have me be this supportive uh, uh, pretending to be dad. No, 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 no. If you don't like either of those and you can't raise it by yourself, you go back to the natural biological father. That's who you really want anyway. Either way, I ain't with you no more. Not doing it. And if you gentlemen, if you can't bring yourself to even give her those terms, then you just say to her, even if I love the child, the child's not mine and I'm not going to keep the child away from the blood father. That's how you do it. But you do not. Don't just not reward bad behavior. Don't let them get away from the negative consequences of their bad choices. Because when she makes the decision to do this with some other dude, even if she don't know to whom the child biologically belongs, she's at war with you because she's still willing to take your resources in the event of a doubt. That's war, gentlemen. She has still pegged you as the biological inferior. Shout out to Red Femme Diaries because she is confessing this. We know this, but she's confessing it. And I'm going to say something, Muslim sisters, in the West, I mean, I'm going to get on your butts too. Because, see, we men have already understood. Consciously or subconsciously, women know what they're doing. Red Femme Diaries came out and said, no, women know what they're doing. Both consciously and subconsciously, they know what they're doing. And when you agree that you're going to take on somebody else's seed and raise that before you even have your own, she knows that you're admitting, biolo that you're admitting to biological and genetic inferiority to the real baby daddy. Red Femme Diaries, a born-again Christian with whom we will never agree, with whom I will not agree on religion unless she becomes Muslim, still beat the Western Muslim to the punch in admitting something that is wrong, admitting to a particular game, and that men have no interest in this now. She beat the, I mean, a lot of Christian women are upset. A lot of, you know, black liberal Christian women are upset because we all saw the video in which the single mom before said I'm talking about it, the men in my inbox not just because of how I look and you men are low value if you don't if you refuse to be a stepdad uh, excuse me single mom before I'll tell you what I got this great idea how about this we blend families okay but on one condition I never separate any mind from their biological moms they're free to come and go between us as they please you do the same with your biological baby daddy Kids are free to come and go as the three of y'all please, but we combine. However, you do what I tell you, when I tell you, you're allowed to give me feedback and opinions, but the final decision rests with me and I will never accept from you, I got a headache as an excuse for you to not bend over that couch, take everything off. You got a headache, pop a Tylenol in and I'll grab the lube. And if I take care of the bills, I don't lift a finger in that father mucking house. Would you accept conditions like that? Granted, I'm married now already and I'm not looking for a second, but I already know the answer to that. You're not. Muslims in the West, let me tell you all something. The next topic I wanted to cover is an Ara, is a Ara Core TV. I might be mispronouncing the name, but I subscribed to him recently. He's got these short clips about this stuff. He's from the UK, black man from the UK. One of his clips involves two black British men arguing with three black British women and one um, non-black, non-white Muslim woman. One of the black women asked the non-black, non-white woman, are you Muslim? She says, Alhamdulillah, proceeds to look back at the men and tell them that, that in her culture and her religion, they have to fulfill certain roles. And if he doesn't, I'm sorry, I'll just cheat. She is a Muslim. She's not allowed to cheat and neither are the men. Standards for thee, but not for me. Western Muslim women, I'm not talk, I'm not singling you out based on origin either, black or not. I'm telling you, you come up with this liberal BS, you're also at war with men. End of story. You were at war with us. Don't lie about it. Don't try to couch it in some other way. You may not have thought of it as a war before. I get it. I'm telling you it's a war. That's not up for debate. You keep on in this direction. You are then knowingly at war with us. End of story. So y'all check out our record TV and subscribe because even though he ain't Eidos or someone, you all like to really wave that flag around. The fact remains that he is, in fact, on point about this. Next. Um, 
So that's two topics there. So the next one I wanted to cover um, is going to be about um, it's going to be about something else that Dr. T.S. Hunt Johnson has talked about before. This is going to be about uh, how dehumanized you are, black men. Um, when you are dehumanized by a particular demographic enough, that alone is an excuse to not make any approaches to that same demographic. Gentlemen, if you're in a red pill space, whether you ask why SBM, passport, it more, or just, just red pill or MGTOW, whatever you call yourself, understand. Do not think that it is only the black woman that dehumanizes you. That's not true. Understand that the Western woman dehumanizes you. That goes for the westernized Asian woman. That goes for um, the Western white woman, the Western black woman, the Western Latina. Remember on the Lapeef show, Amira was up there one time, but there was a time when a Mexican-American named uh, Nina, I believe is her name, she was up there traditional background, but completely Americanized, Westernized. She said she cheated on her men before her current husband. I don't think she stopped cheating. Now, she's from Odessa, Texas, and I know a little bit about Odessa because um, that's right next to Midland where uh, baby Bush is from. Not the daddy Bush, but baby George Bush uh, is from, and his wife is also from there. Matter of fact, it was in Midland. She drove her car into her ex-boyfriend and killed him, but she was able to convince the cops it was an accident and she got away with it. You look at her smiling and all that femininity she shows and everything else. Yeah, she killed someone. There's nothing like that written about Michelle Obama. Granted, I don't appreciate the way she talked about Barack, even though I'm not one of his supporters. He ain't black enough for me. And I don't mean in terms of his complexion or his white mom. I mean, he's not politically black enough for me. To me, a, a real political black president is going to pardon every single black panther and every other black militant that's in prison. Let them out. End of story. White folks don't like it. So what? If Asada Shakur is not pardoned when a black president gets elected, he's not black enough. And you don't pardon him by saying, well, you know, you really didn't kill that cop. No, you pardon her by saying you killed the cop and we don't care. So what? He deserved it. That's the that's exactly what the F Western white civilization needs. But they're in a powerful position enough to secure that they never get what they deserve anytime soon. However, considering that Obama was fought against to a certain extent by his own wife, according to her own confessions on Oprah, I wanted to point this out. I don't appreciate that. However, one thing that she did not do was think she could kill someone and be go on to become first lady. That's the up for part about this. So Nina was talking. She said, oh, that's my ears perked up because I know that region. Had, uh, had a cousin, a grown cousin that lived there for many years. And I spent many weekends there as a child in Odessa specifically. I know the area. At least I knew it back then. And I can tell you, um, I can tell you to see, it, that's a westernized woman. She's part of the problem. She's at war because think about it. Every guy she was with, she was cheating on them. You think she just stopped because she's married now? Maybe, maybe not. We don't really know. But do you think that you should take that risk with someone who was cheated with, on everyone with whom they were before? Now, last thing I'm going to say is this, and that's a lesson. She brought a lesson up. Um, I mean, the last thing I'm going to say about that situation is, is that uh, is what I'm about to tell you now. I'm going to go on to another topic afterwards. Nina is an example of how you can see the light. You can. But even after a lady sees the light, you as a man cannot take certain risks on her. Can't do it. But since we're talking about the Lapeef Network uh, and their show, there's one other thing I wanted. Uh, the next topic actually relates to that. So these things are segueing into each other. I don't know much about Courtney Michelle. What I do know is that her points or her questions about Amira are valid. Amira's got valid points about how men and women are supposed to relate. Sure. The problem is that Amira does not take that same thing to understanding of racial matters. 
Courtney asked Amira point blank this word, A-B-E-D. I'm probably going to mispronounce it. Why do y'all call us that? And Amira act like she didn't know what she was talking about. See, in Arabic, it's Ain Ba Dal. That's the word, Abd. You have to squeeze out that first vowel because that's, that's a consonant um, in the Arabic language, the Ain. It's a letter that doesn't exist in English. So when you read about the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, um, in English, we call one of them Omar ibn Khattab. But in Arabic, it's actually Omar. You got to squeeze out that beginning of, you got to squeeze it out because that's a consonant. So because Courtney Michelle did not know how to spell it in Arabic and she could not say Abd, Amira won't act like she don't know what she's talking about. Now, Arabs that only speak Arabic really would have that problem. They would not be able to, if you don't pronounce every impossible letter exactly the way they hear it growing up, that's not impossible to them. They don't know what you mean. That is very true. They're just like that. Insane like that. It's crazy, but that's how they are. But you flip this up, okay? Amira speaks English probably better than she speaks Arabic. Amira's English is fine. So she knows that the ayin does not exist in English. Therefore, she didn't tell the truth even when Courtney translated the word into English and, Amir, and then Amira still said, I don't know, I never heard anybody do that. That's not true. Now, Amira may not do this and if she didn't, it would have been perfectly okay for Amira to say, my people do do this. Yes, that is true. I don't participate in it. A lot of Arabs don't, but this is a common thing. Now, this would have been telling the truth while still exonerating herself individually. She didn't take that route. She refused that option. I don't know what you're talking about. Amira still wants to present Arabs as being completely innocent in the racial conflict between black and white. They're not. They're not dangerous. They're not violent. That is good. That's a starting point, but they are not completely innocent. They have chosen white over black. Amira has done the same thing. They have blamed black folks for things that we have we within every right to do, including retaliate against white folks when we rarely do it. They still think white is legitimate. That's how they view it. And it's insane because you got a lot of Lebanese living in Africa that were born and raised in Africa and don't know any country other than whichever African nation into which they were born and raised. It's, it's crazy. It's insane. It's like that. You got many of them that would not agree, but they will tell you, oh, no. Mom and dad lived in uh, whatever nation in Africa and they, you know, they, they moved over there from Lebanon and they still call black people slaves. They were talking Arabic and call black people slaves. They had some of the locals thinking that the word in their language for black was Abd, slave. That's real. That's bad. All I wanted Amir to do was to just admit what the truth is. And if she wasn't a part of it, I would have been the one to defend and say, OK, well, she didn't do it. And she told the truth about the fact that the people do. No, no. every Arab that is not black, every Arab that, that, that others don't know is black, knows that Arabs that aren't black will sit there and routinely call black people slaves. The few exceptions are probably Sudan and um, don't say Somali because that's not really an Arab country. But the exceptions are probably Sudan and then Morocco, where they use another word. In Morocco, they have another term for us. Even in Mauritania, where a lot of people are black, they use the term Abd to mean black. They got three races, so to speak. There's white, fire and slave. Those are the three complexions and races they ascribe to human beings. That's how they describe it in Mauritania, according to what um, a former student that studied there told me. They still call a slave. So understand that it is uh, as she did not tell the truth about this. And this is where Courtney Michelle was actually correct. Now, does that mean that she has I mean, every point she makes is I don't know. And I haven't listened yet because she's usually on there for a long time. But this was a valid point. Absolutely. So when Mira was sitting up talking about somehow we're more racist. No, we have a right to be. We should be. But we're not. That's never been the case. We're just not. You think about it, you take a child that has uh, one parent from each race, we accept the child, their community does not. That's the end of it. That right there says everything. This is actually something that black folks are beginning to say we need to refuse to do. Nat Measy being one of them saying, you know, we need to stop doing this. You got one child, I mean, you got a child and one parent is white and the other parent is black. We, need to, we don't need to take them as though they are black. You can be nice to them individually, but they, they have allegiance to an actual white person. 
And we know white folks ain't going to accept them. Now, this would actually mean that biracials would have to form another community. So NACMEZI is supporting the argument of some other black folks that are saying that lighter skin and race mixed Negroes need to have their own community. He's actually fueling that particular argument. But the point is that the historical pattern to which he's referring proves that we are not as racist. So whatever happened to her growing up, whatever happened to Amir growing up after 9-11 was probably a reaction to the bias that Arabs have. And I know that it's there because when I went back to visit my hometown in 2019, I was there for about in my hometown for three days before I actually flew to other cities in uh, the United States to handle some business. And I saw the Arabs in my hometown. I saw them and they didn't know that I was a, they, they had no clue that I was a shine. So when I'd walk in, get something. And the reason we did this is because my man, let, let's call him Bobby Hewitt. My man, Bobby Hewitt, decided he was going to take me from uh, store to store to show me what he was talking about. And I heard where somebody, he took me to some of these hoods and some of them were coming in. Hey, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's happening, Omar? Hey, what's up, Malik? How you doing? Oh, how's everything? Uh, everything? How, how are you? And then they whisper under their breath, loser. Or something of that nature. One of them did this and I heard him clearly. And I looked at him and I said, you know him? Uh, kind of. How do you know he's a loser? This is the real problem. That is very true. Courtney Michelle may not be right about everything. I, got, I, ha, I have to listen to her more to know where she's right and wrong, but this is true. She's not, maybe she doesn't want to hear the traditionalism of Amira, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But she has every right to question Amira's motives. Because even though Amira may not hate us just because we are black, Amira still thinks that white is legitimate. And the fact is, if you're going to sit up here on that platform and you're going to, if, you, if any of you are going to sit up and support the platform, when they sit up and say that our culture is trash, you need to understand everybody's culture is trash. That's true across the board. That means if you're debating about them saying that the culture is trash, that means you haven't been listening to me. I've sat up and I've told you everybody's culture is trash. It's just that you in black America are used to seeing the other minorities of the other non-whites that have been cherry picked by U.S. embassies and consulates. I keep telling you that the Chinese you see are the ones that got the visa. How many you think went to the U.S. embassies and consulates and did not get visas? Do you see a pattern here? The Pakistanis you see are not even like the ones in the U.K. I tell you in the States, and this is something that um, I think it was full of sports that brought this up. To, to Bir Muhammad, shout out to both of them, assalamu alaikum gentlemen. In the UK, you could talk about a Pakistani gang and they will believe you and they will run and hide. In the, in the States, I'm, yeah, in the UK, they'll run, they'll believe you. In the States, I tell you about a Pakistani gang, you bust out laughing and you have every right to. Because it's not realistic. The US embassies and consulates and the UK embassies and consulates cherry pick who gets visas but they're cherry picking because they're two different nations are going to have two different details in them. And when it comes down to it, when it comes down to it, the U.S. really, really cherry picks. That's why in the States, you don't even see the gangsters from Bangladesh. Now, in the U.K., the Bangladeshis are culturally very different from the Pakistanis. In the United States, they don't like each other very much, but you and I don't get to know the difference because of the way that they've been cherry picked. It's Europeans that don't go through that same cherry picking and therefore they actually make up the bulk of illegal immigrants officially in the U.S. because they usually go into the U.S. on a tourist visa, which is easy for them to get. And then they overstay the tourist visas and they're not checked. That's the difference. So there's a whole lot. And if you're sitting up there watching Lapeef and you're watching this debate, and you're getting into it about is our culture trash or is it not? And this goes for Courtney as well. This is one of the points she needed to make. Everyone's is. Ours, Mira's, Nina's, everybody's culture's trash at the end of the day. It's just we are in a unique position to not necessarily know this, but now I'm telling you, and I expect you all to hear me say this and turn around and repeat it to other people. 
I expect you to, to spread this as quickly as you would if I sat up here and told you some scandalous news and gossip about somebody else. Everyone's culture sucks. Thank you for listening. Again, uh, black hall, black mind, black out, assalamu alaikum. Black heterosexual non-select male power just because they don't like it and black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day.